All right. We've got an interesting one for y'all today. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for watching. Today we're talking concealed carry, a very popular topic in the gun community, the debates on what gun and ammo to carry will probably go on until the end of time. So when you think of concealed carry, most people think of guns like this, the SIG P365 XL or the SIG P365, uh, the Glock 43, even bigger guns like the Glock 19, Glock 26. Those are all great guns. They would work very well. There's a million guns out there that you could conceal carry. But the one thing that all those guns have in common is they're around five or 600 bucks. So not cheap, not super expensive. But I was talking to a buddy of mine at work about concealed carry. And in my state, you have to take a class to get your carry permit, which I don't agree with. I think that's all about money. Uh, but anyway, he was going to take the concealed carry class and he said he was looking for a new gun to buy because he couldn't carry his high point. And I said, why? Why can't you conceal carry your high point? And that is what sparked the idea for today's video. So you guys saw the title, you know what this is. For the last seven days, I have been concealed carrying this bad boy, the high point C9. So we've done several videos on the high points over the last year and a half or so ever since I bought it. You guys pretty much know my opinion on this. Super reliable, very ugly, very bulky and clunky and uh, definitely not my favorite gun. But overall, I think it's a pretty reliable gun and for 100 or 150 bucks would definitely get the job done if this is all you could afford. But one thing is for sure, I don't know too many people that actually carry these high points and I thought Let's give it a shot. So for the last seven days, I've been carrying this thing. And today we're gonna kind of talk about what I learned about the high point over these last seven days of concealed carrying this. Because as most of you know, um, you can shoot a gun and, and you know look at guns in gun shops and talk to people about different guns. But when you carry a gun, you kind of learn a lot more about it than you would if you were just looking at it or shooting it out at the range. So like I said, I've done videos on this gun in the past. Um, they're pretty popular. The videos tend to do very well, I assume, because the guns are so cheap. Like I said, 100 or 150 bucks, you can get a pretty reliable um, 9 millimeter, or I believe they have 40 and 45 as well. Um, but one thing I can say is I've never really had a malfunction out of this gun. It's had a couple little quirks that you guys have probably seen. Um, but they don't jam or, you know, they're not unreliable guns, that's for sure. So the High Point C9 is a nine millimeter, I believe striker fired pistol. Yeah, striker fired and uses a single action trigger mechanism. So it is a striker fired pistol, um, very bulky and just big and ugly. I mean, if I compare this to any of the guns that I have out here, like this is the SIG P365 XL, and you can see the size difference, both in thickness and length. Even my Glock 17 here, which has way more capacity than the high point, but you can just see the high points are super thick and just a, a bulky gun. And that was one of the things that I wanted to test out with carrying this gun. But um, it does have a safety, which I'm not a big fan of. We'll get into more of that here in a minute. And I'll probably try to run some B-roll in over the top of this video of me shooting it because we've done several videos on it. Uh, the capacity in this one, I believe, is eight plus one and not very good for a gun this size, especially with how thick the grip is. But again, it's, you know, you get what you pay for. And a lot of guys really like these high points because it's got to be one of the cheapest pistols in the world, if not the cheapest pistol in the world. One thing that I do love about this gun, and I have to give it its props, is the sights. So I'm gonna try and get out of the way so I'm not flagging myself, but I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's got some really high-vis sights on there. Um, and even when I shoot it like next to my Glocks and stuff, I just love the sights on the high point and I you know, tend to shoot them pretty well. So let's get in to the last week of me carrying this thing. So typically this is the gun that I carry, the SIG P365 XL. This is a 12 plus one, um, very small and compact for a gun with that capacity. Love this gun. It's never given me any problems either, obviously, or I wouldn't be carrying it. But again, these guns are like five or 600 bucks. They're definitely not cheap and a lot of people just can't afford or don't want to spend that amount of money on their carry guns. So when I was looking for a holster for the high point, that was obviously the first step because I didn't have an inside the waistband holster for this thing. Um, I Googled it and I really only found one. I mean, I didn't look super hard. I'm sure there's others out there, but the first one that came up was this. This is a We The People high point C9 holster. Um, pretty nice Kydex holster. It, it you know did the job pretty well, but you can see on the inside of this holster, just how thick. Let me kind of show you guys here. 
look at the difference in thickness from my SIG holster to the high point holster. <laughs> I mean, you can see my face through that high point holster. So obviously you need a thick holster for a thick gun, um, but no complaints about the holster. It definitely worked really well. It even came with a little bag for you to put it in whenever you're not using it, I guess. But it's freezing cold around here right now, so I was wearing a lot of big clothes. I mainly carried this thing around the house and around the barn and you know out when I was making videos. The last couple videos you guys have seen, I've probably been carrying the high point during that video because that's really the only place I've been. But sun up to sundown, I've pretty much had this thing on my hip. So I do carry it like a three or four o'clock position. Um, and I know a lot of guys carry appendix. And I think with a gun like this, appendix would probably be a lot more comfortable just because the thicker guns, I think, carry better in the front. But I'm not used to appendix carry. Uh, it is a good way to conceal big guns. Like you can carry full size Glock 17's appendix. And if you carry it right, um, you can conceal those guns pretty well. So I don't have a problem with appendix carry at all. It's just something I've never really done and you know got the hang of yet. But I'm also not gonna lie, I don't love having a gun pointed at my wiener, but if you carry it safely, it's you know, you're know you not gonna shoot yourself. It's no different than carrying it on your hip or it's pointed at your leg or your butt either way. So, so right off the bat, the first complaint that I have is the thickness of this thing. I don't know if it's the, the design of the front end of it or the holster or what, but it was stabbing me and the side of my butt cheek basically the entire time. And it's no matter how I canted that holster um, or rotated it around, if I moved it towards my hip more, it was stabbing me in the hip. If I moved it towards my butt more, it was stabbing me in the butt. It's just, it's a thick gun and I think that there's really no way to get around that. I did try it appendix and it completely took that away. So just the shape of the gun, it does kind of stab you up here on the front end. Another thing you might notice is I do have a little rubber it came with the gun. It's like a high point rubber slip on grip. I don't typically like these grips, um, but the high points have literally zero stippling or grip texture on the grip. I mean, you can see it's just like smooth polymer. Um, and you know, this is really all I had. So I went ahead and put it on. But if I was going to really carry this thing long term, I'd take this off and put like a talon grip or a handle it grip or something like that. Uh, because you know these rubber slip on grips are definitely not the best and I did notice it catching on my clothes a lot and stuff like that um, another thing that I didn't love is the safety that the high points have so you can see right there it's got that thumb safety and I would assume that this is like a passive safety that you don't have to use but because it's a high point and <laughs> it's such a cheap gun and it has a safety on it I went ahead and just carried it with the safety on because I don't want to be unsafe. I don't know what internal safeties these high points have. Like with a Glock, there's no external thumb safety, um, but they do have internal safeties where if you fall or drop the gun or you know gets hit with something, it's not going to go off. But I don't know if the high point has that. So I did go ahead and carry it with the safety on. I didn't notice the safety too much. It's a sharp uh, little metal hook, and I thought that it would kind of stab me in the side, but it really didn't. Um, so no complaints about that other than keeping in mind that if I had to draw the gun and use it, I do have a thumb safety that I have to flip off. And that's something that I'm really not used to because I don't think I have any other guns that have a thumb safety like that. Now the ammo that I used is the Spear Gold Dot 147 grain. Super good ammo, I've used it a million times in the past. Um, and I don't know how high points cycle hollow points, if they're reliable or not. So I went with a hollow point that was more you know, narrow, not as big of a hollow point cavity like what I have. And my Glock 17 here is the Corbon DPX. And you can see those are some huge hollow point cavities. So didn't want to carry nothing like that, but I'm assuming the high points run hollow points. Uh, plenty reliable. Now, one thing I did notice when I got the holster is the magazine release is exposed. You can see underneath the holster there, that magazine release is exposed. And I have a lot of guns that are like that. I think the SIG... Yep, the uh, SIG P365 and its holster is also exposed. So that doesn't bother me, but because the high point has such a protruding magazine release, um, I thought that it might be a problem, but it wasn't. I never inadvertently dropped a magazine or bumped into that or anything like that. So the holster worked really well. And overall, the gun carried 
better than I thought it would. Uh, it's definitely big and bulky. I had to go out an extra notch on my belt <laughs> to carry this thing because it is thicker than anything I've ever carried for sure. But it wasn't that bad. I had the one problem with it stabbing me in the hip and that was just nagging the entire time. But I think over time, like long term, if I really wanted to carry this thing, I could find a way around that. I could try new holsters, raise the gun up, lower the gun down, um, carry it at different positions. You know, I could probably fix that if I was gonna carry this thing for long-term use. Um, but really that's the only real complaint that I had is the thickness of it and that front end stabbing me in the butt the entire time. Other than that, I kind of forgot that I was wearing a high point for the majority of the last seven days. One thing I will say is at no point did I think that this gun would not work. If I did have to draw my pistol for any reason, I definitely felt confident that the high point would work and would do its job just fine. And that's what's most important. No matter how comfortable or uncomfortable a gun is, the reliability is by far the most important thing when you're talking about a concealed carry gun. And a lot of guys deal with less comfortable guns to get more capacity and more reliability out of their guns. One huge downside is the capacity. I do not like having eight plus one I think it is um, in this gun, especially for a gun this size. This is thicker than my Glock 17. I mean, like I, I showed you guys that already, this thing is super thick with multiple C's and I don't like how thick it is and the grip length and thickness. I mean, you could get, you know, 15, 16 rounds in there and a Glock 19, which has a similar size grip, does carry 15 plus one. So that's 16 rounds of nine millimeter compared to nine rounds of nine millimeter. But it's such a small likelihood that I'll ever have to draw my concealed carry gun that I wasn't too concerned about it. And I will say, um, I don't think it's smart to play games with the guns that you carry and you know carry an unreliable gun all the time. But for the sake of the videos and the YouTube channel and the testing, I wanted to go ahead and give this a shot for one week. And like I said, this is not an unreliable gun. It's just a super cheap and ugly gun. <laughs> one thing I will say is this thing is heavy. <laughs> I'll pull up my Glock 17 here and see. Yeah, the high point is heavier than my Glock 17 and this has twice the capacity in the magazine and a much longer barrel. Um, I don't have a scaler, I would show it to you guys on a scale, but trust me, this high point is heavier than the Glock 17. And that's one thing that I did notice when I was carrying it too, was it just felt like it was pulling down on my belt and my pants a lot more than guns that I'm used to. But all these complaints, if you really think about it, they're just, you know, I don't wanna say cosmetic, but they're like surface level comfortability complaints and stuff like that. As far as the, the function of the gun, um, I have no complaints with the high point. It works and I wouldn't have done this video or this experiment with an unreliable gun. I don't like to play games with self-defense and you know concealed carry and stuff like that. I typically just keep super reliable guns for that stuff and then do experiments out on the range. But I know the high points work and that's why I was willing to do this experiment with the high point. But I gotta say, I'm glad it's over because this thing is super uncomfortable. Um, wouldn't carry it you know, unless it was the only gun that I had. And if it's the only gun that you have or the only gun you can afford, then yeah, it's much better than a knife or a sharp stick or something like that. But I would certainly recommend saving your money and getting something better for your concealed carry gun. And you'll thank me if you do because these high points are just not very comfortable to carry. But I think that's about it guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video or at least found it somewhat entertaining. I know you guys like to laugh at my pain sometimes, um, but I'm glad I did this. I did learn a lot. And like I said, when you carry a gun, you just learn more about it than you would otherwise. You can look at them in the gun shop all day, or go out to the range and even shoot them a little bit. But when you carry a gun, you know, I've grown to hate guns that I thought I would love and vice versa. I didn't think I would like the high point after this. I knew it was gonna piss me off, but I gotta say I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. So let me know in the comments if you have any similar experiences, if you know anyone that carries a high point or you've carried a high point yourself, um, I'd be glad to hear what your experience was. If you liked the video, as always guys, please hit that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.